Yeah, so, yeah, I want to share some thoughts now, tying on from that, but this about exploring yourself and solitude. This is a journey that I implore you to take, okay? Do, in this day and age, we need to sometimes just be on our own to understand who we are. Look at how the Prophet ﷺ would go off in this sense of mindfulness. You need to do this. You need to, because when you're with people, you're constantly just chattering, chattering, chattering. And, and you know what people, you see, this is the amazing thing. <laughs> you see, the reason people say they want to find themselves, the reason you can't around people, people are too busy telling you who you are. Beginning by just, how they beginning by just addressing you, telling you your relation to them, telling you your name, your identity. See, how can you search within when there's you're constantly just being told who you are? You need to withdraw and go in search, you need to kind of just quieten. Sometimes, you see, you may have, you may find yourself with conflicting voices. How often have you, have we found ourselves saying to ourselves that, oh, no, you can't do that. Or, nah, you know, if you do it like, won't, won't this be like this? And then you're, you're thinking, ah, oh, nah, but this, and you're answering it. Or you're telling yourself, oh, my God, you're never going to be able to do this. And you're, which one are you? Are you the one telling you? Are you the one responding? I've got news. You're neither. <laughs> You're the one becoming aware of it. So you have to connect to that and you have to. And I feel that this sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, has been so often uh, not emphasized that this being on your own, and I think that because the world is going in that direction anyway, we can capitalize on it, use it to discover, use it, it's okay. It's a rite of passage. <laughs> it's important. And this is how many, you know, many great mystics of Islam, they attained who they were like this. You know, it's interesting because, you see, one of the distinguishing factors between certain traditions of the world, like, let's say, certain um, um, classical ain't the word even, but people may say primitive, but say, let's say the shamanic of the shamans and people like this that are pre-industrialization and pre-institutionalization many of their practices are very different to, let's say, organized religion. And I don't mean their practices practices because everybody has rituals that are different. But what are some of the core founding factors that, that delineate, that differentiate? And that is that you see, let's say to become learned in Islam, you have to learn stuff. You go through a syllabus, you pass an exam, you become something. You are now this, you know, Maulana, Sheikh, Mufti, you know, the Allama. This is how these people are now because they've done all these studies, learned all this stuff and passed. It's, it's academic in, in its way. And some people in some faiths it may be more um ascetic hermetic you have to abstain you have to be a hermit you have to then you know you're granted these things and you can find that you know echoes of that in islam as well but 
you see in some ways you're just ordained like in christianity you're just ordained you know you've become the priest they've made you the priest now it's you know in hinduism you could say there's a mixture of certain stuff in buddhism as well you just try to have this enlightenment kind of procedure but the difference in some of these other what are seen as primitive traditions is that there you have to have taken a journey of yourself where you've explored where you've gone off you've gone off into solitude you've gone off into a forest you've gone off into some you've had to battle your demons and live there on your own you've had to be in utter quietness apart from your own voices where it's the only way out <laughs> is you're going to go through these through this shadow you're not you know behind you it's just insanity otherwise so Tariq bin Ziyad said when he was on the Andalus port, he burnt the ships. <laughs> he said, وَرَأَكُمُ الْبَحَرِ You know, behind you is just the sea and impending death. And he said, لا, you know, لا مَلْجَعَ لَكُمْ إِلَّا سِيُفُكُمْ <laughs> You want to get through? You got to get through these people, this army ahead of you to get through. He's like, well, I'll see you on the other side. And this is how these people, they what they do is undertake that because they have to go through that self-discovery. You have to make it or it breaks you. And then you come through. And it's interesting, this is how the Prophet ﷺ did. For years, he would just go off into solitude. His own journey. Rahmatan lil alameen. Allah showing us that this is how truly yes the other things come late you know this academizing this learning a syllabus and passing an exam and passing all but they haven't you haven't really found the you and yes some mystics in Islam did you know they did take this route obviously Muhyiddin ibn Arabi people like Jalaluddin al-Rumi other people did take this route but many for many it was just the academic route so this is why I think it's important to understand. And we can, you know, wisdom, wherever you find it, take it. That's what the teaching says. People say it's a hadith. People have questioned the chain. But, you know, al-kalimat al-hikmah dalat al-mu'min. Aynama tajiduha, aynama yajiduha, fahuwa haqqu biha. Wherever somebody finds it, he's more deserving of it. So, and you... I, I feel that there's so much in these traditions and in the early life of the Prophet وسلم, that we can use in this day and age when we're becoming ironically pushed more and more. And especially with this metaverse coming, whenever it does in the coming years, I feel that you know people are going to become more isolated. And because young people don't see this in older in elders, they don't know it's like a rite of passage, but they don't see it and they don't see people doing it. So they're left to their own devices. They don't know what to do and they just spiral inwards. And remember, their neuroplasticity hasn't even fully developed. That's around the age of 25. Your brain fully kind of fledges out. So it's still developing. And because it's weak, or, bit, or not weak, but because it's still underdeveloped and they feel depressed, lonely, low self esteem, we have to be weary of things like suicidal ideations. May Allah make it easy for all.